and welcome to Kiwana Talk. We're a public information show put together by people from the Dearborn Kiwanis Club with help from students at Dearborn High School, my alma mater. My name is Gary Gardner. Welcome to the longest running cable access television show in the entire world. Uh, today we're talking about uh, something that looks like I should be doing now and I'm not doing it. We've got some people here who've really taken the good idea and run with it. We have Carol and Mark Slater. Kiwanians, fellow Kiwanians, yeah. uh, travel people, Ford people, we have all these things in common, but we're going to talk about something else. What are we going to talk about tonight? We're talk about retirement, planning for it, doing it. But Carol, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Yeah, you, uh, uh, you and Mark have been together for a long time. 30, well, it's going on 32 years now. Oh, wow, that's, that's a good long time. Mm -hmm. and, before, and you worked for a long time during that time. Where, where did you work? Ford Motor Company, and, and that's did, 31, 31 years. And what did, what did you think of Ford? I love Ford Motor Company. It's the best place. Best place, they treat their employees like, like um, gold. And there's so many things that they do for charity that they don't, they're humble. They're, they're very humble, they don't brag about it. So there's just many things that they, they contribute, always. But at some point you decided that you, you had enough and you retired. How long ago did you, uh, did you yeah, leave? Yeah, because I'm old now. And so I thought maybe plan B would, phase, phase two of my life would be kind of exciting. So I'm, I think I'm older than you because last October I celebrated the 42nd anniversary of my 29th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so yeah so that so that's that but I, I'm still working but you, but you decided after a long time to retire and yeah I done. decided that I was gonna retire and then I picked my date that was after I had my 30 years at Ford yeah. and I was excited about that and then I said I'm gonna on, on March 27th I'm gonna retire and then it's getting close to March 27th and I just I went to my boss's office and I said, I can't retire, I love it here. Yeah. And he said, Carol, you do whatever you want. This is your life, you, whatever you wanna do. Stay, go, whatever you wanna do, it's your decision. So I just stayed for a while and then after 32 years at Ford, I finally decided to retire. You know, I used to work at Ford. In fact, I left the company, it was, it was well, 43 years ago. Wow. Oh, that's a long ago. Wow. I was there. I started when, when they were still having one option for colors, which was black. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when I was there, there were people who had, I think, had a different experience who couldn't wait till they retired. And it was kind of sad to see some of these people who had a job, Ford treated me very well, and I'm like, I can't, so I decided to go out and practice law. Yeah. But mm -hmm. the people who were there, who had a countdown, and their countdown was seven years down the road, were not happy people. So it sounds like your experience at Ford, and more people today have a better experience than that, was that's what you Yeah, I had, I had a great experience at yeah. Ford. And Mark, you are, uh, you, you had a career, what did you do before you uh, decided to uh, slow down? Yeah, so I was in the uh, the travel business for uh, 50 years. Okay. And uh, the last 25 of those years were at uh, corporate travel and uh, specialized in group travel to destinations all over the world. And did you get to actually travel to some of those places? Did quite a bit. I actually did quite a bit of uh, research uh, where we would go out and we would scout out um, a tour itineraries that, you know, we would put on the market. Um, we would look at uh, hotels, sightseeing restaurants, and then package it all up and come back home and offer it to the public. But at some point, all of us slow down. I tell people I'm, I'm slowing down. I'm down to half days now, just nine to nine. <laughs> just, I work for myself and that's, that's but I, I, I enjoy what I do. And I think if you enjoy what you do, you still do it. But you're not, a, you haven't completely withdrawn all of your efforts yet, have you? Correct, yeah. Uh, when Carol retired, she um, was, had a bit of a, of a void. And I saw that, you know, at, after the, she retired for a year or two. And um, 
I, I worked with the owners of the company to keep uh, one of our, our major clients and uh, I work uh, about 15 to 20 hours a week now in retirement. Uh, but I'm enjoying it because uh, it, it keeps my, my mind sharp. I still have my finger in the pie a little bit. And uh, I just really enjoy what I do, which, you know, Carol enjoyed what she did at Ford. And I, I enjoy the travel business. One of the reasons, too, that I'm not retired yet is at the beginning of COVID when the governor said, go home, shelter in place. So I packed up my computer, my files. I set up in the library at our, in our home. After a week, my wife said, get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> you can come here to sleep. You come here to eat and do some chores for me, but you're not staying underfoot all the time. And so that told me to say, well, maybe I'll be working for a few more years anyway. So. Yeah, another thing about that is during COVID, I was, I was still working at Ford, and I, I really liked going to work every day rather than working from home because I did work from home too. But when you have a question, you know, it's just so much easier to just get up, tap the guy on the shoulder and say, do you know what the latest is? Did they fail testing or is it okay? And then he would go like this to get back to my meeting and I'd tell him, okay, everything's fine. You can't do that when you're working from home because they'll say, well, let's see, what time would be a good time to have a call-in meeting? And it, it just, it's, it's so much more productive when you go to work. Right, but as in the travel business, and then we, even though you traveled and did scouting, Mark, a lot of what you did was remote anyway. Yes, of course. So that, so that's a, it's a different kind of thing. Right. So you, um, you're from, you lived in, you worked at Ford, lived in Michigan, but you mm -hmm. also had thought a little bit down the road before you retired and decided to buy a place in Florida. Why did you pick Florida? We didn't pick it. It was just, it just happened. It just happened. We went to visit Mark's brother, who had a place in Punta Gorda, and we just absolutely loved it. We never thought about moving to Florida because we're both very happily, you know, employed in Michigan. And then um, we just happened to pass by this subdivision, and I kept looking, and I just said, Mark, one of these days I want to live here. I'm talking about when we retire. And then it was a rainy day and we didn't have anything to do because we're used to the sun being out every day. So it started raining and I went, what are we going to do now? Hey, let's turn in here. And there was a house that was available for sale. And that was at a time, 2014, when the housing prices had gone down. Collapsed. And so we bought the house and it was just, it was so, so cheap. And then we just we, we went next door, because we were leaving the next day, because we both had to go to work the next day. And so then we, we, we passed by this yard, great big, huge yard sale. And then we bought all the furniture in this guy's house, because he's selling. So we bought all the furniture in the guy's house. And he says, I'll tell you what, I'll just drop it off since you're leaving. We'll just, we'll just drop it off at your house. And then the guy that was his brother said, did you ever think about renting it? And then I said, of course we're thinking about renting it because we bought it. We don't know what to do with it because we're both going back to, to Michigan. And then he said, well, I'll tell you what, just to show you I'm in good faith, I'll give you a check for $200 just to, you know, to, to tide you over just to let you know I'm serious. And then I said, sure, where do you live? And he lives, <laughs> he lived right across the street from Mark's mom. Wow. So he came over, dropped off the check, and that was it. And that was six years so uh, when you first retired carol uh-huh okay what was your plan or did you not have a plan i didn't have a plan well, how did that work out for you it was boring and so a lot of people said you know like i would ask my fellow retirees so how's retirement and they say oh carol i'm so busy i don't know how i ever got everything done and so then I thought to myself, hmm, I don't feel that way. So I just asked somebody, you know, I said, what is it that you do? And then my one girlfriend said, well, I plant raspberries. And I thought, hmm. How many months will that take to plant? That's raspberries? what I mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My big hobby yeah. was helping, you know, working and purchasing, right. um, building cars and trucks. That was my hobby. So it was different. I've just, I didn't, 
I was bored. Retirement is boring. So lesson first up today from tonight's episode is if, if you're going to retire, maybe you have a plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yep. how did you get past it? When you retire without a plan, what did you do when you woke up we one morning to, and said, what do I do? Yeah, I did. I woke up, Mark went to work and I'm sitting on my couch and I'm thinking, well, now what do I do with myself? And so then Mark it was then COVID, it, it never went away. So Mark went to, we both went to Florida in the winter and then the guys told him that he could just work in Florida. So while he's working, I took up stained glass and then um, I learned how to play the piano and um, I had a lot of fun just sitting around in my pool. So now you've got a gig on a cabaret. It's weeknights on seven, and a <laughs> matinee on Sunday. Be sure to tip your waiters or what? <laughs> no, I'm not any good at the piano. <laughs> but it's fun fooling around with it. So <clears throat> in all seriousness, you know, without having a, you know, a plan, what would you, Mark, you sort of after seeing Carol's experience, what did you, how did you sort of let yourself you know, you get kept that one account. Was that part of your reasoning after seeing uh, Carol's experience? Yeah, I mean, I saw what she went through, and uh, going cold turkey was uh, was hard for her. You know, to kind of find to find her way. You know, after the first uh, few weeks, you know, she you know she slept in and enjoyed all that, but then it's like, okay, what's what's next? <laughs> and so, having seen that. Um, I looked for an opportunity to keep my finger in, you know, in the pie and, you know, work a little bit. And uh, it's worked out very well. Okay, well, what we're going to do right now, we're going to take a little break. We're going to get some words from Kiwanis. Come back and continue our discussion with Carol and Mark Slater about, well, let's think this thing through before we jump in or, or jump out. And what we're going to do going forward, because I'm sure... There's a lot more things you can talk about before we go. So don't go away. I'm Gary Gardner. Be right back after these words. It's easy to get caught up in the details. The day-to-day -day grind. Numb to the noise. Going round and round and round. Deep down, there's something missing. A void inside. A hole to fill. A life lacking. Then, in a minute of clarity, it hits you. The aha moment. You're needed. Kids need you. Kids of all kinds. All these funny, rambunctious, sweet, attention-seeking, vulnerable bundles of energy. They need your love and support. Some have huge life hurdles. Poverty, disease, hunger. And they're reaching out for you. Around the corner, around the world. You are a Kiwanian at heart, a role model, a guide, a builder of dreams. Together, we are Kiwanis, passionate and strong, ready to move mountains or grains of sand. Imagine every child reaching their potential. The power to help is in you. It's not about us, it's about them. Do you hear the call? Kids need Kiwanis. Kiwanis needs you. Welcome back to Kiwanis Talk. I'm your host, Gary Gardner, on this episode on the longest running cable access program in the entire world with Carol and Mark Slater talking about something that people tell me I should do. I'm not thinking about doing, but they seem very happy in it and that they're retiring. Yeah, they're not shy though, I can, I can see that. 
So you have, you've taken up stained glass, okay? Yes. What, what possessed you, Carol Slater, to do stained glass? There was, uh, it was called Visual Arts Center, right by our house. And I always was interested in making things and I love stained glass and they had a stained glass class, so I signed up. So resources that are available for, for, for seniors or people of any, anybody, community resources, talk about how you find those and what, what it's like when you say, hey, I, I like doing this. How did you, you know, besides that community arts center, what, what else is out there for people to do? The things that your, your friends and other retirees have found that they're doing? Get involved in, the, in their own community and there's a lot of things going on. Like what? Well, let's see. Um, that stained glass for one. Um, exercise class, you know, like they have that Zumba. Right. Zumba. That's good for exercising. And then they have all kinds of you know, games that you could play and just get involved in with people in the community. And then like, like we did here in, in Dearborn, Kiwanis, stuff like that, get involved. Is there uh, Kiwanis people down in, 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 in Punta Gorda? Yes, and yes. Mm -hmm. So again, that, that's sort of a continuation of, you know, of there's a nice, nice to have a, a long standing association with the club. Mm -hmm. So Mark, what, what else would you recommend for people that besides you're working part time, Zoom has been a, a, a benefit to my, my profession because I do most of my Zoom hearings by Zoom. What else would you recommend for people as a strategy? Well, I think it's important to, uh, to keep in mind to like, stay productive. Um, I find that, um, you know, all your life, you're you're kind of groomed to get things done and you know meet the schedule get it done check it off get it done get it done and you know in retirement um, you still uh, have that need to produce and you're producing different things like you know Carol's producing stained glass <laughs> pieces uh, but there's uh, there's still the the need to to produce and um, and get things done. And, and you know, as Carol was alluding to, getting involved in uh, community service, you know, such as Kiwanis or St. Vincent de Paul or, or you know, whatever your, uh, your interest may be, um, you know, helps you to stay productive and, and, and feel good about yourself. How about when you moved, what is your schedule? How much time do you spend in Michigan? How much time do you spend in Florida? What's, what's your schedule now? Five months in um, Florida. Okay. If you spent seven months there, then you could avoid the income tax and the inheritance tax, you know. You can, but anyway. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Okay. Yeah, okay. We, like, we like Michigan just as much as we like Florida. Okay. So we want, we're, our goal is to continue to be snowbirds. Because okay. Florida, I mean, because Michigan has you know, beautiful lakes and beautiful spring, f summers and falls. How about the, your social network of p meeting people? How, how easy it is, is it to oh, meet? Oh, real easy, just go to the pool. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people just lay around on their noodles. <laughs> we just float around and talk. <laughs> okay. So how big a community is this? Uh, is it as a regular, how, describe your community, I guess, is the question. Yeah, Buttonwood has uh, 200 homes, roughly, and uh, they have uh, a, you know, a clubhouse with various activities that are you know, directed to people in our age group. It's a 55-plus community. And um, also, as Carol said, they have a, they have a pool, and the, the time that we're there, January through May, uh, it's... Uh, you know, really nice weather, nice time to be in the pool. And that's where, you know, you meet a lot of the residents is just going for an afternoon dip in the pool. And uh, then, you know, you find people that have like interests and you make connections. A lot of nurses in that pool. What does that say about their choices and spouses and just the nurses by themselves or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, 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 they're a lot of married couples. Okay. The wives, a lot of the wives are nurses, and I found that out from talking in the pool, you know, talking about 
like COVID and stuff like that. It was just real interesting conversations. There's, it's just um, real, uh, we have a lot in common with them. We're all the same age. Well, in that community, again, that's part of the, maybe part of the planning too, is to have a community of, with, you know, with people of your same, you know, uh, generation, because you can relate to them in some ways more. Yeah, than it's some nice. Of, some of the younger people, not, not too much, um, um, of uh, oh, what's her name, uh, the singer who's who's there. Uh, all the see, I'm losing it right now. But you can uh, identify with people, and they, you can talk about different things that are in commonality with the, with them. Right. Yeah. So if you had it to do over again, and you know, Carol, what would you what would you, if anything, have done differently with, with when you're timing or planning to to to, to leave your job? I wouldn't do anything different. Everything worked out because when I reached my 30th anniversary, I thought I wanted to retire. I was all excited and then I really didn't want to retire when it got close to the date. And then I stayed on for an, an additional year. And um, I'm glad that, that I stayed on for a little while longer um, because I wasn't ready to retire. And then after I did retire, I realized I still wasn't ready to retire. So, but when you reach a certain age, you know, you feel like I felt like, okay, it's time for me to retire. Maybe somebody else give them a chance to enjoy what I did. How about the the health aspects? So, you know, we're all getting up there a little bit. Right. And how, you know, you said you you've, you've alluded to the, that that you're doing the exercise, those type of things. Right. How important is it, not just for exercise, but to be physically active? Very important. What do you think, Mark? What, how would you, you know, you're, you're sitting around 15 hours a week on the computer still, but what other stuff do you do to, to get out there? Yeah, so we have, uh, we have a routine, uh, whether we're in Michigan or in Florida, where we, uh, we try to get a, a 30 minute walk a day um, in, we really love our walks in Florida because uh, where we're at in Punta Gorda uh, is on the Peace River, and there's a bridge, you know, that goes over the river. Uh, and it's a, you know, it's a wide river. It's kind of like the Detroit River. It's a wide river, and so we uh, we walk the bridge, and uh, we look as we're walking. We can look down, and sometimes we'll see stingrays. Uh, sometimes we'll see dolphins, and uh, it's just really a, you know, a neat experience and a way to get that exercise in. When you go back and forth to Florida and, and you, what you're, well, we're filming this in December, you guys, when, when do you leave? When do you come back? December 27th, we're not, leaving. Not that you're counting down, but yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not counting down. No, okay. I'm not. I, I love it here. Okay. We're going to spend time with my family and I'm looking forward to that. And December 27th, we're going to start our drive, and then we're going to stay there till the end of May. Okay. So when I was in college, I would drive straight through for spring break, 21 mm -hmm. hours, 22 hours, and then uh, then be the spring breaker as much as I could. Mm -hmm. um, you guys don't do, go straight through, do you? No, we don't. Yeah, we typically uh, do it in three days. So okay. Two nights on the road. Much much more relaxed type of thing. Yeah. So. We're down to our, about our last two, two minutes here. Um, how, how has the perspective of, of everything in your life changed since you retired? It's a broad question. How would you say that not working, but looking forward to daily stuff every day because you've got a plan? How, how's that working out? Well, it, it, it works out really good. Uh, we've, we've had uh, some you know, recently we've had some some deaths, you know, in family and like a high school friend of mine, and it kind of puts in perspective that um, it's uh, it's important to uh, keep in touch with um, family, friends, you know, make connections. Um, you know, it's an opportunity in retirement to to make connections with people you haven't seen in a long time. Um, as an example, uh, we went in September and took a trip to the East Coast 
where my mother's side of the family is. And I saw four cousins on that trip, 1600 mile trip, um, that I hadn't seen either one of them in 25 years. And we had an opportunity to, to reconnect. So uh, we've really kind of focused our attention on connecting with people and, and enjoying without, them. Without the time constraint of I gotta be back by Monday night. That's, that's the big for, thing. For, for that. When are you gonna make a connection with your barber there, Mark? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't talk because most of the time my hair is is, is, is is very much very much like yours. Well, that's a good question because that's after I retired, uh, I just decided that I'm retired and I have no responsibility. So I let my hair grow for uh, four months. Okay. I let my beard grow for four months. And by that point, um, Carol was saying, get rid of the beard, get rid of the beard, it's too long. And it, I, she didn't convince me to, but what did convince me is uh, we have a, a, a Mustang convertible and driving in the convertible when the beard starts flying back this way it's, <laughs> it, and it's tugging on you, it, it was kind of annoying. So I got, my, got my beard trimmed. And I did, I got my hair trimmed back to... I'm, I'm just giving you a hard time, okay, because I'm, I'm right there with you, guys, okay? <laughs> well, I want to thank you, Carol and Mark Slater, for coming and talking about that. And I guess the, the bottom line is, is have a plan. And, yeah, and, I'd say and so. And don't be afraid yeah. to get out and become involved, because for people who've been active all their lives, to just become inert is going to lead to a much greater level of, inert, of inertness. Yeah. So, okay. And live for today. Live for today. Yep. Well, thank you for tuning in to Kiwana Talk. I hope you take this message to heart. My name is Gary Gardner. See you again next time. Bye-bye.